Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. Welcome back to my garage. This is my first opportunity to come and actually spend some time out here since I've had a good clear up, created a lot more space for myself. Um, it feels good. I really appreciate the comments that I received on the last video. Um, great subscribers. Your help and suggestions are really what's keeping me going. So thank you very much. If you're not already a subscriber, please just consider that button. It's completely free, but anyway, that's up to you. For now, I'm going to get some started. I've got the footrests that I started before Christmas. I'm going to finish those off. I've got some things I want to talk through with you all about the front end of this bike because that's looking more and more and more complex the more I consider it. Um, and Flint. Need to decide what I'm going to do with that. A few things to finish off. And then uh, I need to use it. I need to try it. It's been lazy to start recently and I'm not sure why. So that might need to be visited. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so back to the footrests as we left them last year. So these have been stripped down and cleaned up and they're okay, but they need a rub down and a coat of paint. They're all solid at least. Um, my problem, if I can get it out of the voice over here on the right, is that this bit is still twisted. You can probably see that. Yeah, you can see that obviously certainly at that angle. So what I'm going to try and do is apply a load of heat to the back of this and then actually twist the whole thing you know in a clockwise motion. So let me yeah let me get some heat out, let me get some levers in that and see if we can't get that looking a bit more acceptable because in one angle it looked all right and then when you look at it that way it's completely knackered. Right Okay, so my plan is that that's the thickest screwdriver that I can fit through those holes. So if I heat it up and then try and just twist that like that, hopefully being supported as close as possible, that will give, if it's hot enough. Let's see what happens. I think this is gonna be a slow process. I don't think my gas is the best. I've got butane propane mix and people have been telling me I should get MAV gas. But anyway, either way, we'll give this a damn good go. See how we get. If I can get it to glow, excellent. But I know this is gonna be acting as a heat sink, so I'm not sure that's gonna be possible. Give it the best shot. Come on, baby. It certainly feels hot. I don't think so. Whew. No, I don't think that moved. Ah. Right, let's try again. This time, new gas bottle. Same one I had before, same type I had before, but it's new, the other one was running out. And these pliers, I seem I can grip on that and that might give me more twisting action. So, let's see if that makes any difference. Certainly the flame's much stronger. We'll see. That's certainly pretty damn hot now. I think, let's give it another turn, see if we can twist that. Oh. 
That moved. Absolutely bloody moved. Cool. That looks better. Right, let's cool down and then we'll have a look at that together. All right, but well it's still warm. But that looks a lamb sight better than it did before. Good. All right, once it's cool, cool, then I can actually finish it off. Okay. Well, that's looking much straighter. So it's up and operates, folds, and does the things it's meant to do. Excellent. All right, let's get some paint on it. So this is my dilemma. That's the original Super Dream. And that is the XL. And my fundamental problem is that in order to fit the frame, I need that additional length of the Super Dream. Now, I was thinking of modifying the frame, but as people have pointed out, it's probably better to modify these. So, if I could snap my fingers right now, all I want is that stem there mounted onto that bottom yoke there. The top I'm not concerned with. There's plenty. So, if we look at the tops, I'll take that off a second. You will see. So, obviously that hole there needs to fit over there, and that hole is slightly larger than this one, but that doesn't give me any particular concerns, because there is certainly plenty of material there, and so to enlarge that hole out to that size I don't see as being a particular issue so I don't have a problem with the top what I have a problem with is the base so let's just say I removed that and wanted to fit this on the base of this one there's not a lot of material and so if I was to remove that and try and fit it there it's going to be really tight so the thickness of this is like 20 26.9 or thereabouts and if I try and offer that up on here there's like there's just no material left. So that, I think, is a challenge. I mean, you know, I guess it's possible to put some more material in there or maybe there is just about enough. Then I thought to myself, well, how about I actually leave that in place? If this is thicker, would it actually sleeve over that and then you know weld through or something in the middle just to actually attach it and make sure it's, it's all solid and it's close it is close the diameter of that I think it actually even almost fits but it will not I can't sleeve it the internal diameter of this is 18 and the external of that is yeah 23 so I can't sleeve that over the top easily and if I remove that I'm not sure there's enough material to enlarge in that hole to take that post Ugh. 
Okay, I'm going to keep thinking on that, keep measuring. Don't know how to proceed. So the more I look at this, the more complications I've got. I had dismissed the top and just said, ah, oh, there's plenty of material to drill that wider to take this stem. But if I do that, I've also got to take into account the thickness difference. So now, if I was to have this hard up against the bottom of that, actually, it might even foul these. Uh, let me try offering this in place. And then I need to measure that, because actually then I think the thread from the top of this to the bolt probably wouldn't come through that wide enough to get the bolt, to get this top nut on. Hmm. All right, let's give that more thought. Yeah, look, from the top of that there to the top of the thread, I've got about 15 mil. From the top of here to the top of the thread, I've got about 23. Oh. So if we did that, if that went through the hole, which it doesn't, but let's, let's assume that was there, but I've got nothing left. I've got no thread protruding through that. So that wouldn't work. The more I look at this, the more I'm thinking I'm trying to achieve something which is just way beyond my capability. I've almost got to have one of these created for a hybrid. It would actually have to have the the length of this, ideally for the bearings, the thickness of this, but to fit the top, it actually wants that in that top on it. I'm talking about a bespoke stem here. It's not impossible, but it's beyond what I can do. But maybe someone can make it. Hmm. Pause and think. Well, there we are. Offered it up on the bike for the first time. Doesn't it look pretty? It looks pretty straight to me. Cool. That seems to operate as it should. Excellent. Cool. Right, get the other one finished off, get them back on, but I can't do that today because I don't have the uh, R clips or split pins. Okay, pause there for today. So foot rest done as much as I can and dilemmas about these two things and what the hell I can do about it. Um, got an idea about having a stem made to the diam to the dimensions of this that I can sleeve over this but with an extended thread at the top to compensate for the extra width and that. That's my current best plan with no experience or knowledge what the hell I'm talking about. So um, let's leave it there for now. Thank you very much for your support, comments and suggestions as always, and we'll see if we can move this forward together. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.